Let's talk about how Mutual TLS works in Linkerd. As a pod is created in your cluster, let's call it the Linky pod. Running the Linky application. As this pod is created, Linkerd's control plane will add a sidecar proxy. It will also add a service account. A service account token that allows the Linkerd proxy to identify itself as it communicates throughout the mesh. This service, as the proxy starts up, it generates a private key. This private key never leaves the pod's memory. This is really important. We don't want this stored to disk. We don't want this hitting the Kubernetes API server. We want this to stay local to the pod so that nothing else can access it. It also generates a certificate signing request. It's based on the identity of the service account that it has. Linkerd's control plane is used to, to issue certificates to the proxy. So as the proxy starts up, it's generated all this information and it sends it to the control plane and says, I have a certificate, please. May I have a certificate, please? Uh, the control plane uses the service account token that's been sent along with that request to validate that the certificate signing request matches all of the information using the Kubernetes API server. If that's all correct, it returns with a certificate. This certificate is time bounded, usually only 24 hours. You can go shorter with that if you're in a more aggressive security posture, or you can go longer with that if you're, if you're more concerned about availability of the control plane. Uh, this needs to refresh periodically so that we can prove that this certificate should stay valid. Then, as other pods in your cluster come up, let's say pod FIPI, we get all the same information over here. So we get a sidecar proxy, and we get a service account just for FIPI. This sidecar as well generates its own private key as it starts up and a certificate signing request that it will use to talk to the control plane. Then, as these, as Linky calls FIPI, or FIPI calls Linky, they can use these certificates to establish mutual authentication. So that the Linky pod knows that it's talking to the FIPI pod. Cryptographically, we have cryptographic proof. We don't have to rely on pod IPs or, or anything like that metadata. And this works, again, by talking to the control plane. So as the Linky tries to connect to the IP address of the FIPI, it goes through the proxy. So we have a connection coming from the application here. It goes through the proxy because of IP tables configured here. And we start to connect. And we use the control plane to give us information if we're talking to a service of all the individual pods in that service and their service accounts. Or if we're talking directly to the pod, we skip the service and we just get the service account for that single pod. Now, FIPI has cryptographic proof that Linky is calling it and vice versa. FIP and Linky knows that it's talking to a FIPI pod and not another pod. It hasn't been redirected on the network and there are no middlemen, middle uh, listeners uh, snooping. So this gives us privacy. Anything in the network, anything else on the node, can't decrypt this traffic. This is private between these instances. Again, we also have authentication. Mutually. This authentication is really important because it can it's used as a building block for authorization. So that we can have policies enforced here that only permit connections from Linky 
and maybe some of the other friends too, or not.